We are on State Game Land 60 in Center County, just outside of Phillipsburg. We, where we are standing right now is just outside the edge of a gypsy moss spray block that was sprayed in May this past year. Uh, you can really start to get a sense for the difference between area that was sprayed versus area that wasn't sprayed. You can see that dark green line in the background, that's the edge of our spray block. Where we're standing now has been heavily defoliated, I would say would be the best terms. The uh, aspens and the oaks are stripped pretty heavily. You get a little bit of a sense of the preferential feeding of gypsy moth. You have this tree clump here behind me that is completely defoliated and stripped. Then you have this one over here that you can tell is still fully green. And I know you guys can't see it right now, but behind you there is an aspen, two red maples, another aspen, and an oak. The aspens are completely defoliated, the maples are not touched, the oak is defoliated. So originally when we laid this block out, our first proposal took the block boundary all the way to the game lands boundary. We didn't want to leave this strip that we're standing in here unsprayed. But there are always financial concerns when it comes to spraying. You have to make decisions about where you're going to spray, how much you're going to spray. So we wanted to make sure that we protected this core habitat area behind us that is dominated by mixed oak. There's red oak, white oak, chestnut oak all through here. And we had to make the decision that these edges will be able to handle any decline that happens in them as long as we protect the core. We wanted to make sure that we were able to protect the core, not just on this game lands, but as many game lands as possible. So you have to make sure that you kind of kind of play that angle and play that game. And we brought all of our block sizes down to from ideal perfect, money's not an issue, to the most important be protected. So you get these little strips here and there, and we'll be, a we'll be able to handle any decline that happens in here because it's such a small area. What what you see in some of these shots that you'll see, you'll see the pockets of green that are in between all of the brown, completely defoliated. And for the most part, what you're gonna find is those green tops that you're seeing are in this area, they're, they're red maple and they're black birch. So there is always the concern when you have these large blocks like this in the past that have been defoliated and heavy damage suffered by gypsy moth is the conversion from an oak dominated forest to a less desirable habitat condition that's dominated by red maple and black birch. And that is the perfect example to see how it happens. The oak, the oak get hit, the other species don't, and they, they get to propagate and the oak just blanks out and it's gone. So this game lands here, which I know it looks pretty bad and it is pretty awful looking right now, but we've also learned lessons from the past. In 2008, this was even worse. So we could not afford to let it happen again in the exact same area because any of the oaks that did survive last time will not survive it again this time. So that's why we have determined that it is not just justifiable, it is the best decision we can make for the amount of money to spend to protect the habitat is to spray for gypsy moth and protect those oak because Everybody likes oak, not because when they're little trees, they like when they're big, healthy green trees and they're dropping a lot of acorns. And when they start getting hit like that, the acorn production stops. And then the oak just becomes a standing tree and you lose a lot of that wildlife value when that drops off. So we'll probably hit a couple more spots as we go through here today. And you can start to see across the landscape that this is like gonna be kind of a green oasis that is surrounded by brown, defoliation all the way through. You'll see a couple of pockets where adjacent landowners, it looks like they sprayed on private and they're the only green spot where they're at. And they, if when you come up here and you look at it, the difference is pretty stunning between a sprayed block and an unsprayed block. So we'll take a tour and see what it looks like. So we're still on State Game Land 60. We're a little further into the interior of the property. What we're looking at here is the difference between the adjacent landowner, which is a, a municipal ownership that did not spray for gypsy moth this year. And you can see that stark difference between green and brown. The property boundary line is about a 
just a pair behind me and you can see the difference what's between us and that block is the result of the 2008 and 9 defoliation where we had to do uh, massive salvage to deal with that and you'll see we're trying to avoid that type of landscape across this whole area by making sure that we can maintain this healthy oak component through gypsy moss spraying moving forward.